It's an immense pleasure meeting you today, meeting an eminent professor of computer science and head of department at MIT. You have really been a pioneer in this field, a path breaker for years. So we would be very interested to hear from you, your views about the future trends in the field of computer science with so many quantum leaps that it's completely mind-blowing. It is amazing what's going on in computer science and this latest thing about uh, large language models yes. like which chat GPT and Bard from Google. It's really, really, even a game changer is a, doesn't quite capture it. It's going to alter our lives in a way that we are all trying to understand. I mean, we are preoccupied with it at MIT. Mm -hmm. Every day we have discussions of this topic, how it's going to affect education, how it's going to affect society. And of course, we are interested in how these models are built and how we can do them better and so on. Because right now they have lots of problems in making errors and, and stuff like that. So I, I don't think it's a passing trend. It's going to affect our lives in a way that we still haven't come to grips with. That, I agree, uh, but could you highlight some of the ways that you feel our lives would be affected, that we should be future ready with? So let me give you some very, very simple examples which are happening yes. right now. Yes. And this is not even a glimpse of what will happen five years from now. Okay. So some very simple examples would be that... Uh, Suppose I have to write a letter of recommendation for a student, mm -hmm. right? Because he's applying for a faculty job or he's applying for graduate school or whatever. Yes. I can give the main salient points, right? Uh, of what I want to write in this letter and I give it to chat GP3 and it will produce the first draft of the letter. Yes. And then, of course, I have to work on it, you know, because I have to personalize it and I have to make it sound good, etc., but the fact of the matter is, if it was going to take me four hours to write this letter before, with the help of this thing, it might take me two hours to write the letter. So my productivity is much, much higher, right? Yeah. Now, if you apply this to industry, I would have never imagined programming can be done in this manner. And now I'm hearing all the time from software engineers in the field, and I'm talking of actually companies and not the engineers, companies are telling me that by asking collaborative efforts with these large language models, mm -hmm. the productivity of programmers is 30 to 40 percent higher, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that is such enormous increase in our productivity that yes. nobody can afford to ignore it. True. Right? And it doesn't mean that we won't be asking people to program. Remember, these things make mistakes. These are only first drafts. So there is always room for doing more. But what it does mean in the short term is that the number of jobs in many, many areas will decrease, right? Mm -hmm. And when I say decrease, it's not a uniform decrease. It's like less skillful the job, more likely it is to be replaced, yes. right? So more skills you have. Uh, so you have to upskill, you uh, have to follow exactly. the latest trends. So what tips would you give for people to outsmart smart technology? What is it required to do that? First of all, today, it doesn't matter what field you want to work in. Any field of engineering, any field of science, I would go as far as to say any field of social science, if you want to work in, you cannot be illiterate about computer science. Yes. Right? So computer science is playing the same role today in all these disciplines that, for example, math and physics played in engineering. Yes. Right? So the kind of education I had was heavily math and physics oriented because all the engineering was built on top of it. So in IITs, in all IITs, you know, the first 
two years go into a general curriculum, right? Where you learn these things and then you specialize in your engineering discipline. And I think now we have to think in terms of computer science based yes. prerequisites, computer science based preparation, because computer science has become at least as important as math and physics in, in many of the things we do. So my advice to anybody is that there is no such thing as knowing too much programming. There is no such thing as knowing too much algorithms. <laughs> there is no such thing as knowing too much discrete math. And if you know these things, you can learn anything on top of that. Even if you're a civil engineer, people will want you to know these things. Even if you're going to be a biologist, Yes. You know, if there is data involved in anything, yes. then you will need these techniques. You will need machine learning techniques and you will need the basic computer science techniques. But as this field expands in its scope, don't you think automation would take care of a lot of what one needs to integrate into our work? Increase in productivity by definition to me means more automation. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. let's understand what more automation means. Yes. More automation means that if I had a clerk keeping my books, it's conceivable that that work now using proper tools can be done in one fourth of the time. True. And you can do the arithmetic yourself. Yes. That yes. means fewer jobs. Yes. You know, but there is always job for sophisticated users of these technologies. That's the That's aspect. the thing people have to understand. Jobs are not going to go away. Certain types of jobs are going to go away. Yes. Right? But more skills you have, there's always going to be a job. So it would require thought leadership. Thought leadership. Ideation, creativity. Uh, right. Understanding exactly what you're yeah. doing, right? Yes. Not just simply sitting there adding numbers because that we can do using machines and calculators, right? So we how can, should students be trained into a learning methodology that encompasses some of these aspects that have become important? I think education has to undergo a pretty fundamental transformation. But if we just stick to the basics, what that means is that you have to learn your fundamentals properly. Yes. And to those fundamentals, you have to add programming and you have to add algorithms and you have to add this discrete math, machine learning, because these are the new subjects True. which were not regarded as so important before. Yes. But now they are very, very important. What's your take on coding? Because everybody is getting kids to learn coding. Do you think it's necessary to know coding? Uh, Coding in the lowest sense of the word is not very important, yes. but you have to understand coding. I mean, you have to kind of understand what coders do. <laughs> exactly. So right. it's a lot about understanding the technology and its application right. and how to apply right, it. Right, 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 right. But we do not necessarily give prizes to people who can add 1,000 numbers very fast. Yes, yes. Because that skill will be sort of irrelevant oh, right. today mm -hmm. right so similarly you know there are many aspects of these things you have to understand but you could be emphasizing some things in the old days yes which is not of any value today i mean you know people don't like to hear this but i mean handwriting has become totally almost irrelevant, irrelevant. <laughs> and yet it's so useful right for some it could connect thought Yes, yes. More, yes. Uh, but now people write directly on. Yes, the... <laughs> yes, yes. I guess. And, and similarly, you know, we have paid so much attention to writing grammatically correct English. Yes. And I'm not saying that that's not very important, but it has become less important now because the tools are so good. Yes. That you write your essay. Right. And then you feed it to one of these things. So once again, it, it goes back to the thought process. Exactly. Yes. So then the moment you say, oh, but anybody could have corrected those spellings and yes. grammatical errors, then what matters? What matters is the content. Yes. <laughs> what yes. did you write in your essay? Yes. Was yes. your ordering of explanations, the way you did everything, did it make sense? Was yeah. it easy to understand? 
And the right questions. The right ask. questions. Did you raise the right questions and, and, and so yes, on? So right. Right. So, <laughs> Professor Arvind, what tips would you give students now of today to be future ready? So, <laughs> let us say three tips that they should keep in mind for success in their careers. I think this is just a general comment about education and mm. this has always been true. It's even more true today because as we are discussing, yes. we realize that you acquire skills which can become obsolete. Yes. Right? But there are other skills you require that do not become obsolete. Right? Yes. Frankly, it's not so hard to know the difference. Mm -hmm. Right? So anything that makes you think Yes. Is very important. Yes. Is very, very important. Yes. Because thinking is what it's about. Mm. When we have long apprenticeship in school and in college, after all, we go to college for, you know, 12 years or something, yes. total or something like that. Sure. What you are learning is not something very specific, but you're also learning how to learn. True. Right? So if the rules of the game change, yes. you say, I'm ready. I know how to approach this. Yes. Right? And the how can, is important. How, how is important? How do we learn? That's the crux. That's the crux. Right? So nobody can know, you know, what will be the information needed 10 years from now. Yes. But what we know is, if I may use the word meta-level learning, yes. <laughs> how to learn yes. Yes. <laughs> will yes. remain there. You know, you look at the facts, you apply critical thinking and yes. you say, well, let's approach it this way. <laughs> True. Thank you so much. That's been really useful. And I shall be in conversation with you again very soon. Thank yeah. you. Thank Especially. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>